Hi movie fans and welcome back subscribers. In this one, we will be reviewing a mystery thriller called Remember from 2015. It is a well-written story about two elderly men hunting down the killer of their families from Auschwitz. It is an original revenge story with an ending you should not miss. Leave a comment as we will be randomly picking one to give a shout out on a future video. Let's do this. The movie opens with Zev Gutman waking up one morning and asking for his wife Ruth. He sees her clothes, but is confused why she is not there with him. When he exits his room, it can be seen that he is a resident in a nursing home. He asks a staff member where his wife is, only to be told that she passed away a week ago. He is suffering from dementia and has to learn of his wife's death daily. Paula, who was his wife's nursing aide, takes him to breakfast and reminds him of the other residents' names. This irritates him and he says he doesn't have to be reminded of everyone's names. Another resident named Max Rosenbaum joins him for breakfast and asks him if he remembers what he promised he would do after Ruth died. Zev's memory is failing him and he no longer remembers the promise, but Max says he has written everything down to help his friend remember. That evening Zev's family is at the nursing home for the last night of Ruth's sitting Shiva ritual. Max takes Zev aside and hands him the letter with all the information that he needs to fulfill his promise. Max then tells Zev to excuse himself from the morning ritual, saying that he is tired and to go read the letter alone. He explains to his son, Charles Gutman, and leaves for his room to read the letter. In the envelope, he finds a number of $100 bills and a train ticket from New York to Cleveland. Later that evening, he sneaks out of the home and gets in a taxi waiting to take him to Penn Station. As the cab drives away, his friend Max is watching him leave on his journey. Once on the train, he strikes up a conversation with a young boy who is also heading to Cleveland and tells him that he is not flying because his friend has arranged the journey. The boy introduces himself as Tyler and says Zev is a strange name. Zev says that it means wolf in Hebrew. Zev shows Tyler the letter from Max in which Max says that he has planned everything for him step by step. The letter says he must follow the steps precisely, crossing them off as he completes them. At the nursing home, Charles Gutman is talking with the manager, who is telling them that the authorities have been alerted that a man with dementia is missing from the home. Charles is upset that they have lost him, but the manager advises him to put an alert on his credit card and assures him that he will not have gone far and will be back before too long. He says that neurocognitive decline can be rapid after the loss of a loved one. On the train, Zev is woken from a slumber and starts to ask for Ruth. He then confuses Tyler for his grandson Adam and starts asking where his grandmother and his sister are, which confuses Tyler. Zev doesn't know where he is or what he is doing until Tyler tells him to read the letter in his pocket. He starts reading the letter and is informed once again that Ruth has died, which makes him mournful one more time. Tyler is a little troubled by this and goes to sit with his brothers. Zev writes a note on his wrist to remind himself, Leonard style. Did you get that reference? Talking about reminders, don't forget to sub and like as it helps us make more videos like this. Tyler's father approaches Zev at Cleveland Station, saying that Tyler was concerned about him and asks if they could help him in any way. Zev says he is fine and has a car meeting him. Tyler's father helps him find the driver of the limo that Max has booked for him. First stop is a gun shop, where Zev's list tells him to purchase a handgun. The salesman suggests a Glock 17. Zev asks if it is German and he replies, close, Austrian. Zev buys the gun and asks him to write out the instructions so that he doesn't forget how to use it. Next on the list is to go to a hotel. The front desk staff is expecting him and tells him that the room is already paid for and a taxi has been booked to take him in the morning to his next destination. In the room, he receives a call from Max, making sure that he is okay and that he managed to buy the gun with no issues. He reports what's up and then has a bath, where he again wakes from a nap in a confused state calling out for Ruth. He is befuddled and sits at the table and is shocked to see a gun. He reads the letter then looks at his arm and finds a number tattooed there. He has a look of bewilderment as he reads the letter. The prearranged taxi takes him to a house in the suburbs. Zev crosses that task off on his list and approaches the house. A woman answers the door and Zev asks if Rudy Curlander is home. He is told that he is downstairs. Zev follows the sound of a TV and laughing down to the basement where he finds an old man like himself. 
Zev asks him if he is Rudy Curlander, and when he says yes, he pulls the gun from his travel bag and orders the man to stand by the window so he can see him properly. He starts grilling the man and learns he was German and served in the army. The man says that was 70 years ago and how he was young, he then asks Zev if he is a Jew. Zev says yeah, and then asks if he was at Auschwitz, the man says no, and that he didn't even hear about Auschwitz until after the war, saying he served in North Africa. Zev asks him to prove it so he shows him some pictures of his time there. He tells Zev that he did not care for the Jews and thought Hitler was right, adding the Jews caused a lot of problems for the country but he thought they were going to work camps but what really happened was shameful, then protests his innocence. Zev phones Max from the hotel to tell him that he was not the person that they are looking for, saying that he is positive that it was not him. Max then urges him to continue and do what he said he would. Zev continues his journey by coach and reads the letter, which explains that at the end of the war some SS officers stole the identities of executed prisoners. Max writes that he has evidence from the Simon Wiesenthal Center that an Auschwitz SS Blockführer moved to the States using the name Rudy Kurlander. They have found four Rudy Kurlanders that fit the profile, but no actual proof. He says that his real name is Otto Vallis and Zev must find him. As the coach is taking Zev to the Canadian border, Charles is frantically trying to track him down. Zev bumbles his way through border control saying that he is there visiting a friend. He arrives at Foyer de Pioneer Nursing Home by Minicab, where a receptionist shows him to Rudy Curlander's room. He asks if he was at Auschwitz and the infirm man says yes, Zev says so was I and pulls his gun on him and says that his whole family was murdered there. The man says he is sorry, but Zev says that he can't just apologize for what he did and gets up to shoot him saying he vowed to kill the man responsible, however the man raises his arm and Zev sees a concentration camp tattoo like his. He asks if he is Jewish, and the man replies homosexual. Zev starts repeatedly saying that he is sorry and breaks down in tears on the man's chest. Continuing his journey by coach, Zev makes his way back into the U.S. to Boise, Idaho, where he stays at a Holiday Inn. In the morning, he is having breakfast when the waitress accidentally spills coffee on the letter from Max. She starts dabbing the letters to mop up the coffee, which makes Zev frantically worried the words will be lost. He rushes to dry the letter and starts to rewrite parts of it where it says that Zev and Max are the only two people alive that can recognize the face of the man who murdered their families. Next on his list is to visit the third Rudy out in the countryside. There is nobody home except a barking German shepherd so he tells the taxi driver he will wait there for the owner to arrive. As he waits a package is dropped off for John Curlander letting him know that he has the right house. The wait is broken by a state trooper who tells him that his father Rudy died recently and invites him in for a drink after he has secured Eva the vicious German shepherd. Looking at a graduation picture, Zev notes that his father looks quite young. John says his father got the best genes for Curlander. Upon inquiring if his father talked about Germany or the war, he is told he wouldn't shut up about it and says how he was a collector. He then takes Zev to see his collection of Nazi memorabilia that John is a little too proud of. It's clear that John's father was a big fan of Nazi ideology. A shocked Zev sits down with a strong drink while John recounts his father's stories, thinking Zev is one of his father's friends. He even invites him to stay the night. John asks how Zev knew his father, and when Zev said from Auschwitz, John laughs saying his father was only 10 when the war started and was never at Auschwitz despite wanting to be. Zev tries to leave saying he got the wrong Rudy Curlander, but John pleads with him to stay and tell him stories about the death camp. He happens to see the tattoo on Zev's arm and soon changes attitude, asking if he is a Jew and when Zev says yes, he starts berating him and pushes him into the couch when he tries to leave. He starts going off on Zev calling him a fucking Jew and gets really aggressive causing Zev to urinate in his trousers and on the couch. This makes things worse and John starts shouting Heil Hitler at him, the dog starts barking more and more. John tries to calm the dog but when he sees Zev looking at them he sets the dog on him. Zev had already armed himself and killed the dog as it is pouncing in him. Seeing this the trooper goes for his gun but Zev puts a slug in his chest and finishes him with a headshot. He then takes a shower and falls asleep on John's bed until he is woken by the answering machine taking a call from a co-worker. 
He rises and has forgotten the whole event that happened and is shocked as he walks through the carnage in the house, eventually finding the letter. He phones Max to report in and says that he killed the wrong man, but he was a Nazi. Max says that this is not what they set out to do and asks if he wants to come in, but Zev says he has to get the man that killed their families. He gets dressed and has the taxi pick him up and take him to the coach station to get a ride to Reno. When he alights from the coach in Reno, he thinks he sees his Ruth, but clumsily falls into the road in his confusion. He is soon surrounded by concerned passers-by. That evening, Charles is relieved to hear his father is well and under observation in hospital, albeit shocked to hear that he is in Nevada. He speaks to Zev and Zev tries to reassure him, telling him he is okay and not to come and see him in hospital saying his mother will be picking him up and then hangs up. He talks to a young girl in his shared room and when her mother leaves he invites her to get a sweet from his jacket. She finds the letter and he asks her to read it and learns, as if it was the first time, that his wife has died. In the letter, Max says they were both Auschwitz survivors and that he works with the Simon Wiesenthal Center to hunt Nazis and bring them to justice. He says he instantly recognized him when he moved to the nursing home, but Zev had forgotten him. He says only he and Zev can recognize Otto Wallisch and that they both promised to kill him because he would never be extradited to Germany in time for a trial, so Zev agreed to go after him when Ruth died. Zev leaves the hospital and takes a cab for over an hour to the Lake Tahoe Holiday Inn, where he gets in contact with Max and says he is ready to confront the last Rudy Curlander. When he checks out in the morning, he does not have enough cash to pay for the room and the taxi, so he charges the room to his card, which alerts Charles that he is in Tahoe. Charles rents a vehicle and asks his wife to find out which cab firm he used and where he was dropped off and then goes to look for his father. The cab drops Zev off at a large log cabin on Lake Tahoe, and when he rings the doorbell, it is answered by Rudy Curlander's daughter Kristen, who says he is sleeping. Zev says that he will wait and is invited in for coffee. The daughter comes straight out and asks if he is there because of Auschwitz, and he answers that he is. She says that he is not going to want to talk about it and offers him some breakfast. He talks briefly with the granddaughter Inga before playing Wagner on the piano. Rudy Curlander soon comes down and says his daughter said someone from Auschwitz was here. He then says that the survivor should not like Wagner, but Zev says, you can't hate music. He then says that he did not recognize him in the photo, but he knew his voice instantly and Rudy says, I knew you would come and find me. Rudy invites him outside saying that he does not want his family to hear what he has to say to him. Once outside, he says it has been a long time since anyone knew his real name, and sometimes he comes out here to say it out loud. He then says he knew Zev would come and find him and then whispers, it has been too long, in his ear. Zev says, take your hands off me Otto, and the man steps back in surprise. Zev tells him that his name is Otto Valish, and he was a blockfeerer at Auschwitz and says that he killed his family. The man is slightly bemused, saying are you crazy? And that he does not understand. Zev says let me help you and pulls the gun from his bag. Inside the house the doorbell rings, Kristen sends Inga to get them for breakfast while she answers the door. She finds Charles there, who explains that he is looking for Zev and how he has been missing. Kirsten says they are outside and leads him there. To where they find Zev pointing the gun at Rudy, Charles asks him to put the gun down, but he refuses unless Rudy tells them who he really is. Rudy says that this is madness. Zev turns the gun on his granddaughter and says he has three seconds or he will shoot her. He starts counting and Rudy says stop as he quickly gets to three and says okay okay. He then says that during the war he was not a prisoner, but a Nazi and a SS blockfeerer who killed many people. Zev tells him to tell them his real name, so he says it is Kunebergstrom, but Zev says no it is not, it is Valish. He looks at him and says no. You are Otto Valish. Zev says no, he is lying, then says he was a prisoner, but the man tells him to look at the tattoo on his arm, which says 98814, and then shows him his tattoo which says 98813, and then tells him they tattooed each other as it was their only way of escape. Charles asks a very confused and in denial Zev if this is true, he says no, it is all lies, but Sturm questions him, asking how could he forget. He then gets closer and reminds him he took the name Zev because it means wolf and they were both wolves. 
Otto then pulls the trigger and shoots his old comrade as his family and Charles watch on in horror. He stands there lost in thought for a few moments and then says, I remember. And shoots himself. <laughs> the movie closes with Max explaining to the nursing home residents that Zev was actually Otto Valish and he killed his family in Auschwitz. Wow. What a story. If you got this far, give us a like and drop a comment to let us know your thoughts on this one. It's a very interesting take on dementia and weaves it well with an equally poignant subject. Peace out.